and if it continues to grow at the same rate, it could become the top two cryptocurrency by capitalization next year. Now that the Soros Foundation manager is in the game, I think that there's evidence we're on the verge of something big. The question is, what's really going on and why? According to the report for the third quarter of 2020, the dribble by XRP for almost $46 million. Welcome to the Coin Post. Monday was quite a fascinating day. Following the news of the upcoming COVID-19 vaccine from P. Pfizer, investors rushed to buy the shares of cruise, hotel, aviation, oil, finance and other companies that got cheap due to the pandemic. And all this time, they were actually surviving on government support. It makes sense that when the demand for risk increases, protective asset price drops and they start selling gold immediately. What's more important, along with the gold, they started selling Bitcoin too. But the most interesting part is that they would buy Bitcoin below $15,000. But gold wasn't that lucky, as they began to buy it very slowly only the next day. It appears that Bitcoin is now more important to investors than gold. But this is just information for starters. Today, we're gonna discuss the threat to stable coins that's looming over the cryptocurrency market. Then we'll talk about Bitcoin and its plans for, for the growth or fall. We'll focus on the preparation for the Ethereum 2.0 launch. And in conclusion, so that you stay here, we'll talk about how Ripple started to buy the XRP. What is that supposed to mean? It would be a big help in promoting this video and my channel if you give us a thumbs up right now. Do it if you enjoy my videos. Let's get into it. First news today is that Shapeshift has delisted privacy coins Monero and Dash from their platform. And even though Dash had previously stated it was no longer private, it didn't help much. Why did I start with this news? Because the regulating ligature around the crypto market's neck will be tightening and private coins are the ones in danger, but next in line are stable coins. In fact, they'd already been shown the red card when the Libra project from Facebook got blocked, although it would seem that nothing is impossible for Zuckerberg to do whatever he wants. Now regulators are wondering what stable coins might be like, and they even prepared a set of rules that would require issuers like Tether to reveal all the secrets to the state, keeping money only in reliable banks and regularly reporting on balance sheets, fund movements and their sources. It's a matter of time, really. Bitfinex and Tether are already under investigation, although they have resisted quite successfully. In the meantime, the capitalization of USDT stablecoin has increased from $4 billion to $17 billion since the beginning of 2020. It's already number three on the coin market cap, and if it continues to grow at the same rate, it could become the top two cryptocurrency by capitalization next year. Now imagine for a second a horror movie in which law enforcement shuts down Tether and what happens to the cryptocurrency market then? I'm really scared, aren't you? At the beginning of the video I mentioned one important Bitcoin's achievement, when it was bought after the drop and the gold wasn't. And here comes even more awesome news. Stanley Freeman Druckenmiller, the billionaire investor, George Soros' fund manager, said he's in long Bitcoin. Do you remember how the current bull run started? At first, the market was fueled by the news of the grayscale amazing purchases, which took more Bitcoins than the miners could mine after the May halving. Then the companies entered the game and suddenly decided to invest some of their capital into the first cryptocurrency. Along with them, Bitcoin was brought up by his old enemies, the bankers. Here's a quote from a JP Morgan report. Bitcoin has considerable potential in the long term if it competes with gold as an alternative. The market capitalization of Bitcoin must be 10 times higher than it is today to match private sector investment in gold through ETF or in guts and coins. Now that the Soros Foundation manager is in the game, I think that there's evidence we're on the verge of something big. The question is what's the plan of those who are now pushing the market? There are only two options. You either play big and expect to go to the moon, or you can find a small profit, pushing as many people as possible in the long and then say hello to January 2017. Obviously, the first option is far more profitable except for one question. 
a regulator is gonna intervene when the Bitcoin price hits, say, $100,000. Well, I'm sorry I'm not too optimistic. I'm sharing my thoughts and reservations with you. You can share in the comments what you think of the moon. And next, we're having Ethereum and Ripple. Now briefly about Ether, because the $450 price increase is great, but it's clearly dictated by the Bitcoin movement. And if Bitcoin decides that it's enough to grow and goes back down, then Ethereum will do the same thing. What's really important here is that we're moving at full speed towards Ethereum 2.0 Phase 0. A smart contract for Ethereum deposits has already been published on GitHub, and the event is scheduled for December 1st. According to the latest data, more than 48,000 Ethereum has been already sent to it. Vitalik Buterin took part in it, releasing 3200 Ethereum for the future staking. May I remind you that, in the meantime, Ethereum will keep working as it is. And on December 1st, only Phase 0 will be launched, which is actually testing the staking feature. With real coins, though. If you want to get involved, then you should know that a smart contract doesn't give the cryptocurrency back. And if you move Ethereum there now, you won't be able to fully use it, because Ethereum 2.0 will further have the first, second and so on launch phases. Give us a thumbs up if you want Ethereum to successfully switch to the POS algorithm. And I'm moving on to the final topic. In the stock market, there is such thing as a buyback, when a company decides to buy back its own shares from the marketplace. But Ripple has repeatedly stated that XRP is not their stock, it's just a token. And what's more, they ignore the fact they release it, saying it just so happens that we own most of this asset. The question is, what's really going on and why? According to the report for the third quarter of 2020, the Dribble by XRP for almost $46 million. That's what we could pull on their report. First, this quarter showed a huge increase in XRP trading by 108% compared to the previous reporting period. It's over $37 billion. Second, in this quarter Ripple not only sold but also bought XRP. We see that they realized XRP for $81 million, but the company also made purchases for $46 million. They justified their action as supporting a healthy market. In investor language, this means that Ripple is waiting for XRP price increase, and therefore they're ready to even buy it out of the market to hit the jackpot. If your eyes lit up and you're in a hurry to open an exchange and buy some XRP, wait for two minutes. You need the first one to subscribe to our channel, and the second one to think about how honest Ripple was in their statement. Is there a chance that their purchases on the market were not related to future profits, but to the desire to keep the rate from falling? For example, so that other buyers don't get frustrated and dump their tokens in large numbers. Share in the comments what you think of why Ripple would buy XRP. I'm eager to know. And if you're still here, don't forget to support our channel with your likes. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. It's the Coin Post channel. Subscribe and get enlightened.